What should the first steps look like when you pick up soft shots in beach volleyball defense? What's up, I'm Alex from runbeachvolleyfast.com. This video is designed to help you become a better beach volleyball defender. But it's also going to be a controversial video because when I started playing the sport and started to learn it, I had a lot of coaches that told me a certain way that I should be doing my defensive steps. And I did this way and I found out that it doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel quick, it doesn't feel efficient. So what I ended up doing was I went and looked at pros, some of the best defenders in the world, and looked at what they did. And what I found was that they did not do the same as all of these coaches told me to do. So this is the topic that we're gonna dive deeper into today. Because I believe that beach volleyball players around the world deserve to actually sort of know the truth and what's actually going on at the highest level, rather than some sort of idea that some coach might think sounds good, but actually doesn't work. So <laughs> I'm not necessarily here to make enemies or friends. I'm just here to basically tell what I found. If you end up agreeing with me or not, we, we can see afterwards and we can discuss that. But I think that if there is this huge misinformation gap between what most coaches teach and what the pros actually do, then I do think that it's a topic worth exploring. One more quick little note before we get started. So this is a video where I'm gonna talk a lot about what pros are actually doing. And that means that it would be very efficient if this video had some video examples of pros. But because of copyright issues, what I'll do is that the video examples in this video will be of me, but in the description below, I will put links to pros doing the same thing as I do. So basically what you can do is after you watch this video, if you wanna double check that what I'm saying is true, you can go and have a look at these pros and just sort of confirm that. I hope this provides a nice little middle ground between copyright issues and convenience for you. Now let's get started. Okay, so what is all of this about? It's all about getting our bodies to move in one direction as fast as possible. So if this is my defensive position, the cut shot would be over there and the line shot would be over there and my job would be to get my body over there and pick the ball up. So the trick is then how do we get our bodies to move as quickly as possible in these directions. So what a lot of coaches teach here about footwork and steps is that if I'm here in my defensive position and I'm going to go pick up the line shot what they say that I should do is that I should push away from this leg, my left leg, the leg closest to where I want to go, and sort of just take a big step with this leg so that it looks something like this and this, and then I pick the ball up. And I guess the theory behind this is something like it's the least amount of steps or it's the simplest or there's no negative steps, there's nothing going backwards, anything like that. The problem is that the pros don't do this when you look at what they do. <laughs> so what the pros actually do is, rather than push away from this leg, if you just do like a mini push away, like a jolt from this leg, it, what it does is it, it sort of lifts the body up a little bit, and especially this leg, it lifts up a little bit, and it gives this leg the opportunity to twist around, and sometimes even move inwards a little bit so that this leg then gets into a position where it's stronger to push and propel your body that way. So in reality, both of these techniques actually kind of look very similar and it's, you kind of need to look at them in slow motion even to sometimes even be able to see this difference, but it is a very important difference. So both of them are correct in that this leg should do a lot of work for us to go that way. The difference is just should it do it that straight away from sort of an unnatural position or should we just allow to push away from this leg so that this leg then gets into a better position so that we can have even more speed? So I guess with some sort of logic like I mentioned before, it would be counterintuitive to 
take steps that way if I want to move that way. And in a sense, this, this maybe not first step, but second step with this leg is a negative step and goes backwards sometimes. But the thing is that the job for our body is to get our center of our mass to get moving that way. And for it to do that, it, the legs need to be sort of over here <laughs> compared to the center of the mass. And therefore, taking this negative step makes that happen quicker. So yes, you are taking a step in the wrong direction, but it puts your body in a position where it can move that way quicker. So the total sum is that you end up saving time. Another thing that I noticed is that when people want to go that way, most often this jolt movement makes this leg twist and sometimes it goes inwards and in very rare cases it can even go outwards. So here's what I think happens is that it depends a little bit on your how wide your defensive starting position happens to be whether that's uh, in this specific repetition, maybe sometimes things happen in the game and then you're just standing somehow and then you have to start moving, or how you trained to basically be positioned. That's uh, all of that is topics for other videos. But what I believe happens is that if you're happening to stand narrow, then it makes sometimes more sense for the body to push away and, and actually bring the, the left leg out a little bit. And if you're standing very wide, then <laughs> the body just needs this leg to get in here under the body more. So then it's gonna do something like that, which means that there's going to be a huge negative step. And we're not quite yet done with all of the complexities because what I also noticed is that sometimes the pros actually do what the coaches are teaching. <laughs> and this is especially in the cases where the pros have either read the attacker or they're guessing where the attacker is going to hit the ball. So basically in these cases they might not be in as big of a rush to get where they need to go. And if I'm not in a super rush and I want to go there, maybe what I'll do is actually this. So it's still a slight push from the right leg that then transfers to the left leg, but it's not this jolt push. It's more of a slow, slow push that then just doesn't lift this leg up and makes that twist thing happen. And the topic on whether it's better to play defense with standing still and waiting and seeing where the ball is gonna go and then move there or there, or if it's better to sort of try to read and or guess or cheat or whatever you want to call it and move early. That's a topic that is not for this video. They both have advantages and disadvantages. In this video, I wanted to solely focus on the movement aspect of all of this. Now, are you ready for some good news? Let's do some good news. Most people, as far as I've seen, don't need to learn what I have talked about in this video. For most people, this movement pattern of pushing away from this leg and dropping this leg inwards a little bit is the natural thing that they will do when they just try to make their body move quicker. I know I'm not the only one that has had a coach tell me to change into this, this idea of, of not doing this, but of doing this instead, and just felt that, hey, this feels unnatural, I feel slower, this feels just untrue, and, uh, that is the case and it's good news. So <laughs> actually most people that are watching this video, you can just keep on doing what you're doing and not change anything and be happy and you will be doing exactly the same thing as the pros are doing. So this might be the one rare beach volleyball technique where your problem is actually not going to be how to learn the technique and how to change into it, but your problem might rather be on how to get your coach to stop bugging you when they try to get you to change into something that works worse. However, what I suggest people do is record themselves when they play or do defensive drills and just double check in the video afterwards if you are actually doing this thing that I describe. 
And if you wouldn't be doing that and you actually need to learn what I have taught in this video, then let me know in the comments below because I want to talk to you. Cool. I hope this has been insightful that you learned something. And if there's anything that you disagree with me or think I'm wrong with something, let me know in the comments. I'm not here to say this or that. I'm here to find out the truth. And I believe that the way we find out the truth is with open conversation, with arguing against each other until we sort of distill the truth. So I'm all open for counter arguments and whatnot. I will take this video even down one day if I figure out one day that it was a big mistake to, to do it. But as long as you see this video, I guess this is what I believe. Go and check out the pro examples in the description below. I'll also put a video to another video similar to this, but for baseball, which is basically a, a baseball coach coming to the same conclusion as I have gotten into this video. So yes, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. This channel wouldn't be anything without you guys. If you like the work that I do, please consider helping me grow this channel faster. Because the faster this channel grows, the more and easier I can then help you guys with Beach Volleyball. Some good ways to do that are to click the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, comment in the comment section below, and maybe the most important one, tell your friends about these videos and this project. All right, until next time, have a good time, learn some Beach Volleyball. See you again soon.